this talk is about <laughs> the curse of knowledge. Uh, the curse of knowledge is a cognitive bias we all have. And it's really, I mean, you can really see it, especially on the internet in written content a lot of the time. And I decided to make a talk about it because it affected me a lot. It still does. And I'm sure if it's it's not just me, there will be other people. And a lot of people don't even know what the curse of knowledge is. So they, they might have it. They, they're not aware of it because they don't know what it is. So I'm kind of hoping that once we talk about this topic a little bit, people will realize that maybe they might be doing something that could be improved or, you know, just to be aware. I think a lot of the time when we talk about topics like this, like these soft skills, uh, people think it's like common sense, like, you know, everyone knows, but people don't know because if you, how, how could you know if you don't look into it? So, yeah. And for those who may not know you, uh, I don't know why they wouldn't because you're an amazing person. <laughs> who is Susanna? I am, I'm going to present myself as a, uh, how Aaron Francis introduced me at Nashville, Laracon US, and he called me, I am a seasoned fix fixture. So ever since then, I call myself a seasoned fixture of the Laravel community. I don't think I'm that seasoned. Well, depends how you look at it. I don't know about the fixture, but I quite like it. So yeah, I am a Laravel and PHP developer. I've been a, a developer for five, six years, six years now, not that long. This is my second career, so I've changed career halfway through my life. And yeah, I like to do a lot of these talks about soft skills because uh, I think they're important and there isn't enough. And some people might not think that they are important, especially when it comes to technical conference or, you know, technical talks. But at the end of the day, we are all human beings and we all we are all humans. And this is what connects us all. So I think we need to talk about soft skills a little bit. Uh, so that's me. I couldn't agree with you more, though. I think um, I think soft skills, they're something that becomes important as soon as you're trying to get past that senior mm -hmm. developer level. When you're starting to look at, you know, mentoring larger groups of people or managing a group of people, you need those mm -hmm. soft skills. And things like the curse of knowledge, imposter syndrome. Yeah lots of other soft skills that we we see in in conferences they they're overlooked until a certain point by a lot of people because yeah. they think i just need to focus on technical things technical topics because i want to go far in my career and you get to a certain point and you need those soft skills yeah and i think a lot of Definitely people think oh i'm fine. just yeah, I'm just sitting at my computer and like, I don't really talk to people much, so I don't need these things. But we do, especially these days when everything is, there's so much online communication. You don't need to be talking face to face with somebody to, you know, uh, experience some of these things like written conversation, uh, you know, in all these things. And as, uh, also when it comes to soft skills, like you mentioned, imposter syndrome, things like that. If you're not aware about these things that you might be suffering from, they can really hold you back from your career. And it's uh, once you realize this is what's going on, then you have a chance to address it and maybe, you know, improve yourself. And that can take you really further when it comes to your, in terms of your career. So, yeah, I think it's important. How do people learn? Like, how do people uh learn new things or troubleshoot, find uh, solutions to their problems. Because most of us, we do go on the internet and we go to all these platforms, whether it's Google, Stack Overflow, Reddit, or anything else to, you know, look for the solutions to our problems or ask questions or even answer questions. And this is how we communicate with other people. So it doesn't have to be face-to-face, -face, voice conversation, anything that's written, anything when you uh, write content on the internet, tutorials, articles, everything is then consumed by other people. So, um, yeah, this uh, the beginning of this talk is really about how don't think it's not for you, because as long as you do go on the Internet and as long as you do read other people's content or write content yourself, this talk is for you. Yeah, and the thing is, because nobody really, nobody was born knowing how to program. We all learned it, and we might have learned it from books, but books were written by people. And we, you know, we all learn from other people, whether we realize it or not. We are all standing on the shoulders of giants, I like to say that, this phrase, because it's true. Nobody learned it by themselves. Even if you think, oh, I was just at home doing my own thing on a computer, everyone was consuming somebody else's knowledge. 
uh, and the way the other knowledge was presented is maybe that's how we learn. Maybe we found some sources where easier for us to consume than others. Uh, so yeah, we know that programming is hard. Some people might say it might look looking at other people that it's easy. Everyone else had it easier than me, for example. And why do I find it so hard? But we need to remember that pro programming is hard. It's not easy. Nobody was born knowing it. Everyone had to really work hard for it. So asking the right questions or answering questions, it all comes under this learning umbrella. And the thing is that yeah, in technology, uh, the technology moves forward so fast. We've got new frameworks coming up all the time and even existing frameworks, they keep being you know, improved, developed. And as developers, we do, we pride ourselves on this knowledge on our technical skills and knowledge. And we spend years honing our craft and you know, learning new technologies, mastering new languages and frameworks. But the thing is, the more we do it, the more we learn, uh, it can become a double-edged sword. If there is such a thing as knowing too much, you can know too much. Yeah, <laughs> when we just say this is uh, how we feel, how I feel a lot of the time, when I just keep learning more and more things. And I do feel like, I. Can I consume any more? Can I learn any more? And the thing is, the more we learn, we will be, the more we will know. But then if we know a lot, it becomes harder for us to maybe explain certain topics to other people that don't know as much, or maybe have been, you know, learning, like you said, different programming languages. Different languages will have maybe different conventions. And then when you are, you know, the more you learn, which is amazing and we all want to know more things. But then when it comes to maybe sharing our information, we might forget that there will be people that don't know as much and they don't have the same level of knowledge as we do. Yeah, it is a cognitive bias. It means and for people who don't know what a cognitive bias is, cognitive bias is um, a bias. It's basically a shortcut that our brain makes because learning and thinking or reasoning, all these things, they take a lot of cognitive power. Our, we only have one brain and it's amazing, yes, but it does a lot of work. So cognitive bias is that our brain taking a shortcut, kind of uh, relying on a, the rules of thumb or uh, on our experience of our knowledge. Uh, it's basically the, if it looks like a duck and walks like a duck, walks like a duck, it's probably a duck. So this is what our brain does when it looks at things around us. And that's cognitive bias. And cursor knowledge is one of these cognitive biases. It basically means that we assume something about somebody based on our experience, based on our knowledge, but this assumption, this, bias, this assumption is not always correct. People assume that there is some sort of baseline that everyone, let's say, let, let's say Laravel developers, that every Laravel developer will know this for sure. Like that's, that's the baseline, but it's not really because there's a Laravel developer who's only done their first Laravel new blog yesterday and they will not know what you and I know. And then there will be people who's been doing it for years and years and they will think, okay, like I, I can skip it. But the thing is, if you want to skip it, you can, you're not going to lose anything. But then if we skip something for people that need this information, this is where they become, you know, stuck. So always, yeah. I would say always uh, on a uh, on a side of being too careful rather than not really. And if you don't want to target beginners, then make it clear in your tutorial that this is not for beginners or make sure that at the beginning of your content, you say, okay, the prerequisites is that you already know this, that and the other. Because if you don't, you might struggle. But tell people beforehand so that they, are, they don't find themselves, like let's say you've got an article 2000 word long or tutorial, and at the beginning, it starts nice and easy. And they think, okay, this is for me. I'm going to get it. But, you know, down the line, they'll realize, actually, no, it wasn't for me because I don't understand this concept or that concept. And I wasn't warned about it. When I was starting to, when I was learning how to code, well, I still learn daily. But right at the beginning, I was following a lot of tutorials because that's that's what I did. And a lot of the, the tutorials would have, like, open your command line and install or run this and that command. But... A lot of these examples had this dollar sign there and I had no idea what it meant. I thought it was part of the command. So I would add it to the command. So instead of, let's say, composer require, require Laravel something, I would, I would do dollar sign composer require and it would fail every single time, obviously. But I didn't know why. And people would say, like, just read the error, Susanna. Like, what's wrong with you? But the thing is, at the beginning, the command line, it was this black box of magic that I was very, very intimidated by. I was so afraid I'm going to break the whole computer. Like I didn't know what was going on. And so if something didn't go well, 
I would panic because I was like, did I just break something? What is this huge error? Like, what does it mean? And instead of reading the error, I would just close it and pretend it never happened. <laughs> I don't know if, if I'm the only one, but like ignorance. Like, no, you're just, not. <laughs> just, I'm just going to pretend I never saw this error and I'm going to move on. And because of this dollar sign, it took me forever to fix it or to realize what was going on because none of those t- tutorials would tell me, don't do the dollar sign. Like this is this just signifies the command line. You don't have to say it. And I was using my uh, uh, Windows computer back then. And I don't even, I know on some terminal or depending which terminal you are using, it might already have the dollar sign, but my one didn't. So I just remember this being very frustrating. And I was right at the beginning. And it's so easy to put somebody off because if you are already... If you are starting something new and you're not sure if it's for you, first of all, you know, you don't know if if you are even clever enough to do this. And then you're following a tutorial for beginners and you fail on the very first step. I mean, how, I, how is it going to make you feel? It's going to make you feel like, OK, it's not good. I'm, I'm not good enough. I can't do this. Let's just try something else. So I think especially with content for beginners, we need to be careful because we want people to join our industry. I think it's a great industry to be a to be a developer. It's it's amazing. You can. Okay, I know I, I'm going to generalize, but generally, <laughs> you can work from anywhere you want. You can work from home. You can work around your family. You can choose what you're going to most of the time, what you're going to work on. You, know, you can make huge difference to people's lives. So we want people to join our industry. We don't want to filter them out right at the beginning. We, you know, we need to make it accessible to for as many people to join as possible. And yeah, it's not going to be for everyone. And some people will probably say eventually, okay, tried wasn't for me. But let's not make them question themselves and their abilities right at the beginning, because that's such a shame. So another example, this was so the command line example was right at the beginning of my learning journey. And this is an example that actually came up with. uh, Well, I I was looking into how to build a Docker image, and that's not a couple of months ago, not that long ago. And I found this tutorial and it was like how to create a Docker, Docker image. And actually, even in there, you can see the dollar sign. And I didn't even notice it until I put the slides together. But there is like a case in point example, people including the dollar sign and not really saying you don't have to copy it. But the other thing is like, how many people would notice the dot at at the end of the command, like latest and then space dot? Because I wouldn't. I would, oh, all the things that like, first of all, I would probably not even see it at first because this is called inattentional blindness when you are looking at something but your brain just doesn't see it and i think everyone has experienced this when you know your code has a bug and you even know it's let's say this block of code has a bug not the whole code base you you found that it's this file and this few lines this is this is where the bug is and you're looking at it and you know it's there but you cannot see it for the life of you you cannot see where it is and this is called inattentional blindness when the brain just doesn't see it and the other thing I, I would have thought, maybe the dot is just a typo. It doesn't really, it doesn't have a meaning. It's not supposed to be there. Basically, I wouldn't think twice about this dot at the end of this command. But luckily, the yeah. person who was writing the tutorial, they they brought my attention to the dot. They said, no, that the dot at the end tells the Docker build command to look for the Docker file in the current directory. Well, thank you, because now not only I know the dot is important, I know what it does. And they also said what happens when you leave it out and what sort of error you will get. And I think that's amazing for somebody writing tutorials because now not only they told me as somebody reading the the tutorial that this dot is important, this is what it does, and this is what happens when you leave it out. So all the people who maybe in the future already have Googled how to build a Docker image and came up with this article, maybe they Googled the error. Maybe they said, okay, I'm trying to build a Docker image and this is the error I get. And this they would learn on this article and now they would know Oh, now I get it. I know why I got this error and I know what to do. So this is an example how to write content with beginner in mind. Not just assume everyone knows this or not just skip over it, but say what it does, why it's important and what happens when you leave it out. Because that kind of kill two flies with one, what's the saying? Two birds with one stone. You will help people learning about it and then you will help people who already tried to do it, had this error and they're Googling the error. So I think yeah. this is a great example of how to write content for beginners. And I think that the picture of this uh, developer with like circles under their eyes and coffee or tea in hand, that, that shows like how a lot of us uh, have felt at one point or another when you're just looking at something you're trying to understand and you don't understand. And yeah, there's a slide of many confused developers because uh, and at any given time of day, there will be a lot of confused developers looking at something that, and maybe the next day they'll be like, oh, it was so obvious. But at that point, they were confused. So if you have more resources that will then address these 
I don't like to like I keep saying obvious, but they're obvious once you know about them. But there are so many things that just don't make sense to an outsider. And think of it like if you were to read a tutorial to somebody who's not a developer, whether it's a friend or a sibling or partner, what would they find find confusing? And think of it that way. Like even if you find it difficult to relate to yourself, try to imagine it's somebody else reading your thing and then see, okay, they might ask me about that because that doesn't, doesn't make sense. So it's always good to kind of take yourself out of the equation and think of it from somebody else's perspective. I found this on a very popular Laravel learning platform and it was just a question in the forum, how to create an event. So somebody was asking, you know, they were confused about what they were working on. They didn't know how to create an event. So they write an article, uh, they, they wrote a question, they uh, added some uh, code samples and then, you know, they ask for help and you might think, well, maybe they didn't do their homework. Maybe just they're just choosing the easy way and just asking other people to do their work for them. But let's just assume that they did their homework. They tried, it didn't work. So they asked a question on a public forum, which is really quite scary as well. I have to say when you ask, especially, you know, if you're using your name or if your name is in any way known, it's really hard to ask questions because that means you're kind of showing people that you don't know. And it's, yeah the insecurities will kick in. So anyway, this person asked a question and the answer they received was read the docs. And for me, this is, I'm kind of, this is my pet peeve, read the docs. I'm going to assume that most of us read the docs and I know some people don't, but I'm, I'm going to, again, assume the best of people and say, okay, everyone reads the docs. They, the doc, well, people read the docs. They, they try to read it. They try to understand and they still couldn't figure it out. So when somebody answers you, when you finally write a question on a public forum and somebody answers, read the docs, it's like, oh, okay. Now, not only I already read the docs, but I didn't understand. And you're sending me back to the docs. Like, does it mean that I am, am I really that dumb that I don't get everyone else understands, but I don't? So I... I really don't like the question or the answer, read the docs. So there was another person who answered. And the, the next example is actually a good way to answer because what they did, they outlined, they, they told this original post not just what to do, but how to do it. Like they gave the whole story. So they said how to create an event, what happens when you run the artist in command, how to then raise the event. So this person actually tried to teach the original poster, how to do it. So that next time they will know. And not only the original person, but anyone else who will land on, the, on, this, uh, on this thread. But the thing is, after that, some the original uh, poster asked for a clarification. And to that, somebody else replied, again, if you read the documentation, it will explain. Come on, people. <laughs> like, if, if this is what you have to say, you don't have to say it at all. Like, some people might feel like, oh, somebody has a question I have to answer. No, you don't. If you don't have a good answer, you don't have to answer at all because sometimes a wrong answer is actually more damaging than no answer. Espe or like this is this is completely useless. Like read documentation. Okay, we've already covered it, but this person still struggled. So don't send them back to documentation. And uh, not only that, the, the person after, and this is like, ooh, when I read that, I was, oh my God. So the next answer after that was that, Somebody was saying, I'm worried you are working on an application like this, seeing this a lot lately, people picking up jobs, jobs above their league and then asking for help. I'm like, why are you saying this? And I know at the end it says like, and teach them like, uh, and treat, teach them. I think that they meant like, uh, treat them like shit. Sorry, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to say that. But, <laughs> but the thing is, what benefit is this? Like what, why would anyone say that? Who is this going to help other than make the person who wrote this feel better or superior? I don't know. Because what is the point? Like, And also, isn't everyone working on something we don't understand? If you are working on and on, on things that you know how to do, your job must be pretty boring. I think especially as developers, we always do things that we don't quite understand or we challenge ourselves. And not only that, I thought this is how it's supposed to do because, yeah, I question it all the time. Like every time I'm working on something, I was like, am I supposed to know this? Does everyone know this? No, this is how we learn by doing things that we don't yet know. And then we figure it out. So telling somebody that they pick jobs above their league, why? Why would you do that? What's the benefit of this? You're like you're going to make them feel bad. You're not going to answer that question. You're going to make them feel bad. And not only this one person, anyone else who will, again, land on this discussion later in the future and they will read this i was like oh that's me i'm picking jobs about my league maybe i shouldn't do it that's horrible and you know it's just don't say these things 
Um, so yeah, and eventually the original person, the, the person who originally asked the question, they gave up. They said, whatever, I'm not able to do this. Like, bye. This is this is horrible. Like, if like I said, if you don't have anything nice to say, oh, I mean, this is a well-known thing. Like, if you've got nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all. And it goes even more so in written communication when you, when any emotions, you might say it like in a joking way and like say, ha, ha, ha. But people don't see that in the written communication. They don't know how, what, how you were, like how it sounded in your head. And if they're already struggling, let's say this person writing the event or they spent days on it and was really frustrated and angry and really desperate. And then they read that they're already in a negative state of mind. And then they read something like this and like, and who knows, maybe they won't take the job again next time. And like, I just feel this is, people should think twice before they reply. And if you've got nothing nice to say, honestly, don't say anything at all. I think, um, you know, in, in that scenario, in that exact scenario you explained, you know, we could have potentially lost a member of the community who could have been helpful to hundreds of people, mm. could have been someone who, you know, maybe they're not the most technical, but maybe, you know, they're an anchor in the community who helps others into the community, or mm. maybe they're just someone really nice that you yeah. can have a good conversation with, and you might have just yeah. pushed them out of it. Yeah, and not just that person, like anyone else who will read it in the future. Because I, when I read that answer, it like it got to me a little bit, well, a lot. Because that's how I feel about everything I do. Like above my league, it's about I shouldn't be doing it. Like I'm not good enough. And then you read this, and let's say events. Like if I was learning events, yeah, and I read something like this, and ask maybe it's maybe I'm not clever enough. Maybe I shouldn't be doing it. So yeah, it all comes down to to be nice to people you know don't don't answer just to make yourself feel better maybe that person who who's who wrote that reply they were having a bad day and they just kind of took it out on the internet but yeah just don't do it <laughs> and like i said like yeah. another person hurt and yeah you teach people how to do something you don't have to necessarily just tell them just write this code and it will work for you no you want to teach them but teach them nicely be kind Okay, so this is kind of my framework of how what what I have to go through pretty much daily when I'm working. So I have a problem or a question, and then I need to yeah I need I need to find a solution to this. And the thing is, some people have mentors, and it's great you've got somebody you can ask questions, some actual person you can ask questions. And I wish everyone had that person, but the reality is not everyone has has a mentor or an actual person to just bounce ideas off. A lot of people have to rely on the internet, on people on the internet. So, and again, because English isn't my native language, so I've got these things that kind of I have to go through when I have a problem. So let's say I have a problem, a question, then I need to ask the question. So I need to formulate it well enough so that I at least hope it makes sense to other people. So when I actually formulate a question and then I post it somewhere, whether it's some Slack or Discord or forum, then I need to wait for the answer. And sometimes I don't get an answer. Fair enough. But sometimes I get an answer, but I don't understand. Like, it's like I'm trying to understand, but I don't get it. And there could be two reasons or multiple reasons. But my main two reasons are that either it's because my English is not good enough, because I always default to the fact that my English is not good enough. Not good enough. That's like, that's where my brain goes, first of all. Oh, it's your English. So maybe I don't understand the answer because of my English. But could it be that the answer is just not good enough? That's the other thing, because like I said, not everyone is lucky to have a mentor. A lot of people have to rely on the kind of kindness of strangers on the inside to help them with bugs and issues. So and because we all learn from other people, it's only fair we, you know, pay it forward. We do our bit. Uh, so this is uh, another example from my not that long ago history. <laughs> what is a service container in Laravel? And actually, as a... Uh, as a story, side story is when I gave this talk in uh, Laracon US Nashville, so many people came out to me afterwards saying, we don't understand what service container in Laravel is. Like I thought when I was preparing this talk, I was like, oh, now everyone's going to know that I don't know this very basic thing that everyone understands. But I did it anyway, because I thought it, it was a good example of how uh, like some of the topics I might struggle with, but I still even doing the talk, standing there on the stage, I thought it's so embarrassing. Like everyone knows this and now I'm, I'm going to tell people that I don't know it. 
But funny enough, so many people came to me saying, you know what, once you figure it out, let us know because we still don't understand. And this is about service container. There are so many videos and the, we've got the docs and yeah, videos and tutorials and I've read them all, I think, pretty much. But it's just not clicking for me. I've, I've tried over and over. And it's just some of these things just take time, I suppose. Yeah, and there are many concepts and technical words that I don't understand. It's another example is like, what is a dependency injection? Like here I ask ChatGPT because I lately I have started using that to explain things to me like as if I'm five or in simple words. Because again, if you go on Google, you will probably land on Stack Overflow answer. And these are not always very kind either. So yeah, I use ChatGPT because that it's kind of, it's been working for me lately. Laravel has great documentation and we've got Laravel bootcamp. So this is a different way of to learn things. And then we've got videos, another different way of learning for different people. We've got tutorials and articles and all that. But different people learn differently. Different people learn, need different things to understand. And we all will find our way. You know, we if we only have dogs, we will leave a huge part of our community out because some people just don't learn from documentation. And because we've got this wealth of resources, both written and audio or video, that makes we're trying to, well, let's try to make sure there's something for everyone. But regardless of these great resources, there will be questions. People will ask questions and we want them to be asking questions. I don't see Stack Overflow going bankrupt anytime soon. But now that I said it, I think I've seen <laughs> I've seen like stats like ever since ChatGPT came out, Stack Overflow engagement went down. But what I'm trying to say is that there will always be platform where people ask questions, whether it's AI or whether it's Slack or Discord, like people will continue to be asking questions regardless how good the documentation is and how many video tutorials we have. And we want people to be asking questions because like I said, this is how we move forward as a community, as the framework. This is how new tools are developed because people will find something didn't make sense or something wasn't as simple as, as they wanted it to be. So we we want people to be asking questions and we shouldn't make people feel bad for not understanding something or for asking a question. We shouldn't tell them, go and read the docs because like I said, it might not be for them. We want to engage with other people. We want to encourage people to talk because otherwise... It would be really sad if somebody just sat at home typing on their computer, not talking to anyone like what? That's not life. Like I think partly, at least that's why I one of the main reasons I why I stuck with Laravel is was the community. I want I like the community. I knew nothing about Laravel, the framework, the technology. I hardly knew what PHP was. But the first thing I noticed was the community that they were nice. And I was like, oh, I want to be part of this. So we want to be a good community that is. Uh, accessible and uh, encouraging and kind because that's how we attract other people so please ask questions and don't feel don't feel bad for not understanding documentation or videos or no it's fine if you don't understand and you're not the only one and if you if there is somebody that's listening to this and thinking oh like i don't care about this fine you don't have to care about this but then don't make it worse for other people just you know you don't have to answer you don't have to talk to other people if you're not feeling it Definitely. I actually think I remember when you joined the Laravel community, um, not straight away, but I, I remember talking to you <laughs> on Twitter when, when yeah. you were in the community and, you know, I hope I made a good impression. You know, I was... Well, we're still talking, so... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Years Years later, <laughs> but, obviously. Yeah. Years, Maybe a good, I think it's a good few years, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it's been, I don't even know. It must've been four, four, four or five years. I think we kind of started talking yeah. right at the beginning of my journey and see if it yeah. wasn't for people like you, who knows if I would still be here because I came from a WordPress space and the benefit yeah. of WordPress is that it's such a huge industry that like you can be as technical as you want and you don't have to be technical at all. And you can still find a job in the WordPress space because yeah. you can just, you don't even have to touch code to get a job as a WordPress developer. So being there was actually quite nice for me because I didn't feel the imposter syndrome like I do now because there were so many different people doing their own thing. But when I kind of started learning Laravel, it was so different. It was much more technical. And that's when the imposter syndrome kind of hit me. I was like, oh, I'm not clever enough. I'm not good enough. And if it wasn't for people like you who answer stupid questions <laughs> and don't make me feel stupid, like, you know, maybe I would have, would have gone back to WordPress or who knows. 
the name of the talk is the curse of knowledge, but really it's the privilege of knowledge because despite the name, uh, knowledge is privilege and we all get to share with other people and we, you know, nobody's, like I said, nobody's born knowing this stuff. We all, it's hard. We all learn from other people. So let's just make it easier on the people to come and on ourselves.